Well, I'm back on the coast today. Uh, last time I was photographing birds on the coast. Today I'm going to be photographing mammals on the coast. So I'm here at Donnernook in Lincolnshire. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to photograph the grey seals here at Donnernook. It's absolutely freezing today. I mean, the temperature's quite low, but uh, it's the wind as well. It's a bitingly cold wind because it's coming slightly from the north. So I've got these got these gloves on today. Um, one of the things with coming to a location like this is it's just so tempting to just photograph everything and run around like a bit like a headless chicken, which is what I used to do. Let's go. Even though I haven't been here for many, many, many years, I'm actually still going to try and pick my pictures. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to walk up. I'm going to walk up. I've already seen lots of seals. I've seen some interesting photo opportunities, but I'm going to walk up and I'm just going to see what I can find. Um, anything I think is a better opportunity in terms of photography, maybe in terms of the light or behavior, whatever it is, I'm just going to try and focus on that. camera might notice there's quite a lot of people I'm not too f I'm not a massive fan of people you'll notice here that you have got a fence separating you from the seals the first one is like a small wooden kind of like picket fence and then just slightly behind that is is an ordinary wire fence which is just a little bit higher um, but that's not it's not a problem a lot of the time you can just shoot over that now sometimes if, if the seals low then the fence is in the way so in that case a big lens is certainly going to help even like 300 I'm using today then it's gonna it's gonna blur it anyway the closer you get to the fence the more blurred it's gonna be and it shouldn't show up too much in your pictures but I would also try and make the effort to make sure that you're actually shooting through a gap in the fence um, the gaps aren't very big so try and make sure that you're absolutely absolutely shooting through one of those gaps as much as you can I had one seal that just came bounding towards me and it was a really good opportunity to test the camera, uh, to test the autofocus. Got it on servo, single spot focus at the moment and uh, looking at the images on the screen, I don't know until I get them. We'll see how well it coped. Just a little tip on the light today. I think today is the 27th of November. It's about half 10 by now and the sun. So if you're kind of looking this way, looking over to the seals, the sun is like directly behind you. So if you're here at this time of year, at this time, then if it's clear sky, the sun is gonna be right behind you. So that's something you know you can work with. Earlier on, it's gonna be more to your right, just coming up over your right shoulder. And then if you come later in the afternoon, it's just gonna to be to the left of you, but it is largely behind you for most of the day. The fact that we need that sign there is slightly worrying to me. <laughs> I've just found a seal pup that I really like. I mean, there's so many here, and you think they're all the same, but they're not. This one's just got a really nice look to it. I think the colours of it, just something about it and its face, and it's also been quite active as well. I'm just drawn to this particular pup, so I'm definitely going to photograph this one. Now, in terms of my exposure today, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just trying to keep the shutter speed fairly high, about 500 of a second. Uh, F5.6, F6.3, just closing the aperture down a bit because I've got enough light to do that. I'm actually using auto ISO. Um, now, even though in these really bright sunny conditions, manual ISO is great, I generally use that. Um, and it's perfect if the seals are out there in the bright sun. But the problem is, if the seals, in particular the pups, if they come a bit closer, kind of right up by the fence which they sometimes do particularly the pups um, then that's in a bit more shade still still kind of in shade at the moment so if they come into there then the exposure is a bit more difficult so I'm using auto ISO pretty much just for that reason so if I come across something close or it's far away the auto ISO can kind of just deal with both those conditions <laughs> no. 
Um, I was going to go up there, but I really don't want to. There is a seal pup here with its mother and it's suckling and it's literally just a couple of feet off the path. It couldn't really be much closer. Now I'm just trying to look at my angle here. I quite like this angle originally when I'm slightly to the side. I'm taking some shots here. But then I want to go around more to the right because I want to try and get a real head-on shot. I want to try and get as head-on as I can. Get both of those eyes of the pups looking towards me. And it's a really, really close-up shot. I'm using a 300mm lens but it's a massively close up shot obviously just concentrating on the pup that's the the main focus point of this image but also I want to get just some of the coat of the mother as well with the focus I was a bit unsure whether the the eye tracking would work and I started off with the with either a spot or a single point focus and that was working perfectly fine and I did try a little later with the with the eye focus on this Canon R6 um, I found it a bit inconsistent with the pups I think it was just easier because they've got much bigger eyes you can see them more clearly but with the adults the eyes just aren't sometimes that obvious and uh, he definitely struggled at times It's really noisy right now. So this is not a proper test today with the R7. I'm going to make a separate video all about using the R7 and this lens, uh, hopefully in the next few weeks. But I just want to test it out a little bit today with the seals. Stabilisation seemed okay there, like I was fairly impressed with hand holding such a big lens. Uh, with this camera the stabilisation looks pretty good to me, I was keeping it nice and steady. And just from that little bit of shooting I did there, it felt like it wasn't coping as well. Uh, I did have it on the eye tracking for a bit, which isn't always coping great, but it felt like it was struggling more than using the Canon R6. There's a bit of action up here. And uh, one of the things I didn't know, because you don't know sometimes until you try things, is it looks like you can't get focus point all around the viewfinder. I've got like a smaller box, so it's like a smaller box comes up uh, more in the middle of the viewfinder, and that is the only area that you can actually focus when I've got this lens on. So I wanted to give you just a few tips if you are photographing here at Donnanook this time of year. And the first one is just to look for something different, look for something special. This place is just made for photography. There's so much going on. You get so much behavior and interaction out there. So don't just come here and, and just try and photograph simple portraits of seals. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I think even if you've never been here before, just try and be on the lookout for something happening, some kind of behavior. Um, a lot of that is gonna be female seals with the pups. Uh, you're gonna get some suckling as well. Uh, that's always good to photograph. And obviously interactions between bigger seals, the females, and particularly the males. I didn't really see that much today. Also, these animals are just so expressive. They do so many things. You know, they really are very much like humans when you watch them. Uh, you'll see them yawning, you'll see them scratching themselves, you'll see them stretching. Um, and it's just fascinating to watch all those different behaviors behaviors every individual is different sometimes you can feel you can pick up on that personality so in in some cases it can almost be better just to stay with one seal I know how difficult that is sometimes just stay with one seal and just simply wait for it to do something and then also think about your composition can you do anything creative in terms of composition and one of the things I did there was just getting very tight with that seal pup uh, that was suckling on its mother and that's just something a little bit different for me and my other piece of advice 
advice, if you can, is to avoid the weekends. My nose is quite a lot of people. I'm not a massive fan of people. Uh, today was just incredibly busy. I couldn't believe how many people here there were. On a weekend, it's gonna be even worse. So if you can, I'd try and stick to the weekday, especially this time of year when it is always busy. And the other thing you can do as well is make use of the surroundings. So if it's a bit further away, for example, you can always try and bring in the surroundings into your composition to make a more interesting shot. And I did that one of the with one of the earlier pictures that I took um, of a seal that was resting in shallow water. And I just like the look, it was kind of like a bit of mud there, uh, almost like a sandbar. And then the foreground was quite interesting as well. So I tried to compose that to put all those elements into the picture rather than just taking a standard shot. Uh, with maybe the seal in the middle. So if you can put a bit of design in your picture sometimes using the surroundings, that can be really good. Now this place is absolutely fantastic for photography, there's no doubt about it, and getting so close to those animals is incredible, uh, but it's not gonna be for everyone. So if you like hordes of people, then, then come here. Uh, if you like to be out in the middle of nowhere, uh, where well, it's really nice and peaceful, enjoying the wildlife, then don't come here. Uh, do keep a lookout for the video on the R7 and the RF 600 mm f11 lens. I'm gonna be doing a little review on that probably in the next month or so. Uh, I'm gonna put a video up on the screen which I think you might find interesting as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. I'm just trying a few shots now with the R7 so I've got the, the 600mm lens on still. And, uh, it's really noisy right now. <laughs> might need to go up there. <laughs>